And um, now the whole thing mm. with Quick, and this is where I think it went sideways with the Kings and Quick. I believe they always intended, because the Kings were playing last night and Quick was dressed, I think they always believed to do the trade today, that they would, they would get it done today and that would give them some time to deal with it. However, because the news got out last night that the Columbus and L.A. were working on a deal, you know, everyone's chasing to find out what's in the deal. And at some point, I heard it was quick, and I started looking into it, and I think the Kings all of a sudden realized they were boxed in, that this was going to get out. And I think he was basically told, you know, right at the end of the game. So he was obviously in shock. I mean, who wouldn't be? And I think the thing here, because I asked around and I asked people, if, you know, what do you think about this? And I think most people felt that when you have a guy who's been in an organization for 15 years and he's accomplished what he's accomplished, he should have known for longer that there was a possibility that this could happen. That, um, you know, even like you can argue he doesn't have no trade protection, doesn't have no move protection. This is a business, all of those things. I am willing to take your oral arguments in court, Mr. Merrick. However, I think from, <laughs> from a personal point of view, considering yeah. how important Quick was to the Kings and how valuable he was, there is certainly an agreement out there or a feeling out there that if he was in this process, he should have known about it. Yeah, this has been like this has been a bizarre one. You know, Jonathan Quick. Listen, we think about the Stanley Cups um, and the outstanding performances. I mean, some of the best you know performances that we've seen in the Los Angeles Kings uniform. Uh, this side of Rogi Vashon and Kelly Rudy. Um, Quick is a wildly popular player with Los Angeles. Um, he hosted, you know, <laughs> that Super Bowl weekend. Ellie, you can very well remember it. I mean, Jonathan Quick hosted the Super Bowl party for the Los Angeles Kings. And that Sunday was all about, you know, who's going for Jacob Chikrin Day. And all the, you know, Kings yeah. players, I'm, I'm sure, were sitting around staring at their phones, looking around saying, you know, which one of us or which combination of us aren't going to be here, you know, by, by the end of the Super Bowl this, this time around. Um, I always, like, I don't, I don't like to put too much stock in popularity in the room and good guy in the room and all that because, you know, as people always remind me, hey, Jeff, they don't flood the room. But I, I always wonder about, and you've talked about this with Al McInnes, what does it do to a room? Not necessarily when you bring someone in, or in this case, two people in, but you take someone out who's as wildly popular as Jonathan Quick was. How much of a sensitivity is that in this situation? Well, it, it should be a sensitivity. And in this case, like I don't know what their, like, obviously Rob Blake hasn't spoken yet. I don't know what their plans were for how they were initially planning to do this. But obviously things went way off track and he didn't know. And I'm sure that, you know, it, you know the thing that's going to stand out to people is a couple of weeks ago, they did a ceremony for Dustin Brown. And people were like, yep. what? Dustin Brown's getting a statue? And my whole point is that's stupid. Like what, what should matter is how the community and the Kings fans feel about Dustin Brown. And they obviously feel really great about him. Um, so to yes. me, that's all that matters. I think when you look at uh, Brown and then you look at this, and I'm sure Jonathan Quick will get his statue anyway, but you, you, you just look at it and you say, wait a sec. Like, and if you remember how Brown's career ended, um, it, was, it was different. So I, I think that that's the way people look at it. Like, like, like if, you, if you've been around there a long time, like those guys like Dowdy and Kopitar have been, you look at it and you're like, wait a sec, that's, that's not the way that this should be. And uh, I, would, I, would, I would say, I assume that whenever the Kings do talk about it, I would expect there'd be some admission of that. They'll say it's a business, but you know what? We could have done it a little bit better. They just, you know what happened, Jeff, at this time of year? They lost, they lost control of the narrative. That's what they did.